everyone. Today, we will talk about the heart and the cardiovascular system. This video is presented by Mr. Al Madria, Ms. Joanna Marimata, and Ms. Hannah Miss Sampit, BSE Science 3 students of Buchanan State University. The learning objectives for this lesson are Identify and describe the components of the cardiovascular system. Identify and describe the heart's anatomy and physiology. Identify the classification and the physiology of the blood vessels. Identify and describe the circulatory pathways of the cardiovascular system. And explain how the heart beats. Let's get started! The cardiovascular system is called the blood vascular or the circulatory system. It supplies oxygen from the lungs to the tissues around the body. It also transports carbon dioxide, a waste product, from the body to the lungs. Breathing out then removes carbon dioxide from the body. The cardiovascular system it consists of the heart and a closed system of vessels called arteries, veins, and capillaries. The heart is an organ about the size of your fist that pumps blood through your body. It is in the center of your chest near your lungs. Its function is vital because to survive, the tissues need a continuous supply of oxygen and nutrients, and metabolic waste products have to be removed. Deprived of these necessities, cells soon undergo irreversible changes that lead to death. The heart is enclosed with a fibrous sac called the pericardium. The heart is also made of three layers of tissue. The epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart wall and the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. The myocardium is the muscular middle layer and is the layer that contracts. The endocardium is the innermost layer of the heart and is a thin, glistening sheet of endothelium that lines the heart chambers. Your heart is divided into four chambers. The two upper chambers are called the left and right atria. The two lower chambers are called the left and right ventricles, which contract in a steady rhythm known as your heartbeat. Your heart has four valves that keep your blood moving in the correct direction by opening only one way and only when they need to. Two valves sit like doors between your atria and ventricles to prevent blood from flowing backward into your atria. The tricuspid valve opens into your right ventricle, and the mitral valve opens into your left ventricle. Strong thin tissues called cordae tendinae hold your valves in place during the forceful contractions of your ventricles. Blood leaving the ventricles passes through another set of valves, the pulmonary valve between your right ventricle and pulmonary trunk, and the aortic valve connecting your left ventricle and aorta. Blood flows through the vessels. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Blood is pumped from the ventricles into large elastic arteries that branch repeatedly into smaller and smaller arteries called arterioles. They play a key role in regulating blood flow into the tissue capillaries. The wall of an artery is consists of three layers. The innermost layer, the tunica intima, is simple squamous epithelium surrounded by a connective tissue basement membrane with elastic fibers. The middle layer, tunica media, is primarily smooth muscle and is usually the thickest layer. It not only provides support for the vessel but also changes vessel diameter to regulate blood flow and blood pressure. The outermost layer, which attaches the vessel to the surrounding tissue, is the tunica adventitia. This layer is connective tissue with varying amounts of elastic and collagenous fibers. Capillaries The smallest and most numerous of the blood cells form the connection between the arteries and veins. The primary function of capillaries is the exchange of materials between the blood and tissue cells. After blood passes through the capillaries, it enters the smallest veins called venules. From the venules, it flows into progressively larger and larger veins until it reaches the heart. The blood vessels of the body are functionally divided into two distinctive circuits. 
the pulmonary and systemic circuit. Pulmonary circulation transports oxygen poor blood from the right ventricle to the lungs, where the blood picks up a new blood supply. Then it returns the oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium. Systemic circulation carries oxygenated blood from the left ventricle through the arteries to the capillaries in the tissues of the body. From the tissue capillaries, the deoxygenated blood returns through a system of veins to the right atrium of the heart. The alternating contraction and relaxation of the myocardium in the walls of the heart chambers are called the cardiac cycle. Your heart has a special electrical system called the cardiac induction system that controls the rate and rhythm of the heartbeat. The contraction of the atria and ventricles makes a heartbeat. When your heart beats, it makes a lip dip sound. You may have heard this if you listen with a stethoscope or when you listen to a person's heartbeat. Your heart beats an average of 60 to 100 beats per minute. In that one minute, your heart pumps about 5 quarts of blood through your arteries, delivering a steady stream of oxygen and nutrients all over your body. With each heartbeat, an electrical signal travels from the top of the heart to the bottom. As the signal travels, it causes the heart to contract and pump blood. The heartbeat process includes the following steps. The signal begins in a group of cells called pacemaker cells, located in the sinoatrial node in the right atrium. The electrical signal travels to the walls of the atria, causing them to contract. The electrical signal then moves down to a group of pacemaker cells called the atrioventricular node, located between the atria and the ventricles. Here, the signal slows down slightly. Bundle branches carry signals from the atrioventricular node to the heart apex. The AFI node fires another signal that travels along the walls of your ventricles, causing them to contract and pump blood out of your heart. The ventricles relax and the heartbeat process starts all over again in the SA node. Let's review what we have discussed today. The cardiovascular system supplies oxygen from the lungs to the tissues of the body. It also transports carbon dioxide from the body to the lungs. It consists of the heart and blood vessels, arteries, capillaries, and the veins. The heart is made up of three layers of tissue. The outer layer is the epicardium, the middle layer is the myocardium, and the inner layer is the endocardium. The heart has four chambers. The two upper chambers are called the left and right atrium, known as the receiving chambers. The two lower chambers are called the ventricles, known as the discharging chambers. The heart has four valves, the tricuspid valve, mitral valve, pulmonary valve, and aortic valve. Blood flows from arteries, into the capillaries, and then into the veins. The cardiovascular system has two circulatory pathways, the pulmonary and systemic circuit. Pulmonary circulation carries the oxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs. The systemic circulation carries oxygenated blood from the heart to the body. We have also learned that a cardiac cycle is the contraction and relaxation of the myocardium in the walls of the heart chambers. The heart has also a special electrical system called the cardiac induction system that stimulates the heart to beat.